Our Slayers player is starting at the bottom left of the map, the Zerg player for the Slayers team. His idea is... Slayers, Yu-Gi-Oh! Also known as the King of Code A. Yeah. Always getting pretty far in that tournament. Up against a CJ player, don't confer, don't get confused with Liquid player. His idea is... CJ and Toos. Hero. He sure has some fangirls of his own, doesn't he? It's not only Jadong apparently. Yeah. Speaking of... Oh! This... I love it. This is Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> this is Yu-Gi-Oh! But he is spotted very, very early. And of course I was referring to the temple that he plays here. But his opponent with the probe in his main base has a bit of a lucky scout, spots him on the first position. And now it's important to see how exactly Hero is going to play. This is a temple after Overlord as well. So he's going to have these drones coming out here first. Um, and we'll see how his response is. He's actually making only drones at this moment in time. But he's going to get a faster queen with this. Well, I'm sure that he tried to go for a little bit more of an aggressive build, but when he saw the probe coming into his main base, he was like, okay, well, this is not going to really work as well as I wanted. So he starts to not only bank up the minerals and everything for the Zerglings, but drones up. It's a pretty interesting build. It's just a build where you can get the Zerglings out to do some aggression, but at the same time you have the economy you can fall back onto. I'm a little bit surprised he, he made the Lings uh, at this timing without the Queen. But he is, it's, it's because the thing is, I was going to say, it's because he's doing this because he can get the hatchery, but uh, the Lings will allow him to, to get the hatchery no matter what. Because even if he tries to block with the pylon, well, the Lings are already there. So he, he can get the hatchery no matter what. Uh, but I think getting the, the clean out may have been uh, a more... I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't like the Overlord uh, timing coming out with this. I, I'd rather see him more aggressive, but... Either way, the cannon's going to be up, so he makes sure he gets the hatchery no matter what, gets a faster queen, it all pays off for him. It's I a weird build though, it's unique. Yeah, but it's, I think it's pretty cool, and this is actually what Yu-Gi-Oh! is known for, just very unique builds. He likes to, for example, steal the uh, expansion of his opponent with the hatch on his own, and these are just the timings that he's really comfortable with. It's just those shenanigans that he really likes, and this is something that we see once again. It's pretty funny that the probe is actually trying to hide here, right underneath the Overlord. Yep. You know, probes and all units of StarCraft 2 have the inability to see flying units on high ground above them. They just, they can only look up so far. And wow. now the third base, like, really, really early with this build. But he now has uh, the first queen already on the map. He can build the second one. His drone count is decent. He's at 16. Of course, probes he's dead. behind his opponent. Oh, mineral walk, but I think he's still going to be taken out here. He's trying his best. He may save it yet. Yeah, but it's great for Yu-Gi-Oh! He knows now that he's able to force his opponent's probe back into the main base. Therefore, we have not a single probe left for Hero on the map. And the transition for Hero is something that we are going to see as soon as he finishes his cybernetic score. And with the full wall of here, he can actually not even get into the main base with the probe. Yeah, and that same probe is going to go out to scout again. And he must realize that... Okay, I, was, I thought he was going to send the same location. Ling gets here first. Oh, this is unfortunate. He just wants to see that third base is something he really needs to commit but heavily to to go up there. Yeah, for a second I really thought he was going into the main. I was like, that doesn't make too much sense. No, no. definitely not. Yeah. yeah, but then he makes the curve and goes up to the right. Bit he of a sees detour. what he needs to see now. This is so important. Cybernetic score finishes immediately a sentry and warp kit research started. Plus one is going to be a little bit late if he decides to get it at all. So we have the robotics transition oh, yeah. for Hero here in the main base, and at the same time um, we have uh, two additional queens now for Yu-Gi-Oh! He's currently on one queen, that's queen number two and three, so that he can saturate all bases. Basically use the injects here. And let's see what Yu-Gi-Oh! is up to. He's one of the players that really still likes to go for a mutalisk heavy style. He gets double gas at this point, is not mining, has not been mining gas thus far. But with Yu-Gi-Oh! it's always a little bit difficult to predict what exactly he's going for because he just really likes to be a little bit unorthodox, especially in the matchup against Protoss. Against Terran he has more of a, like a standard style. But this is definitely, um, I think th this is one of best, the hero's best match, uh, sorry. Yu-Gi-Oh's best matchups, actually. Well, he's going for Warp Prism play here, which is pretty predictable considering the close air positions. We talked about this before already on this map. Uh, this is one reason why a lot of players don't like it is because the air, air distances are closer than on almost any other map. Warp Prism play is quite prevalent here, and he will actually be able to do a three-century drop when that Warp Prism comes out if it's well-timed. He knows the Overlord position, so he's going to want to avoid that. 
Just to back my statement up with a few data, uh, with a little bit of data, we have a 58 win percentage for uh, Yu-Gi-Oh in this matchup. It is by far his best matchup, so he's really comfortable against Protoss. And the Wall Prism play is, of course, a little bit scary, but already yeah, spotted, spotted by, by so many thing. things. The Ling and the, wa the Watchtower, yeah. plus the fact that he had the Overlord to the south. And Hero, this is he's doing it, but I mean, yu gi -Oh! like, well, pff, I actually know that the possibility of this is there. So careful. Hero doesn't even try to dodge the Watchtower, so he need he has to know that this has been spotted. Yeah. And he knows he's dropping the sentries out right away. There's no real units here. He's, he's going to fight against some drones, and this is funny because... Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! It's like, well, he's just gonna pick up and get out, and he didn't. So he did pick off a few drones there. Yeah, but a little bit of a weird play anyway is not trying to dodge the Watchtower when you can assume that your opponent definitely has won. It's a little bit odd. Of course, he knew that there are also Overlords. And speaking of Overlords, we have one in the main base that spots everything. Yep. Eight he's gates in total. He's shown the gates, and now he's gonna be able to prepare. This is such a uh, tough position for a hero who has to also kill his own pylon, as mentioned before, to even get out of his base, which supply blocks him. He's making a ton of pylons right now. He's going to try to, to to hide this a little bit with the Watchtower, but Yu-Gi-Oh knows everything. There's no there's no mystery here. He's getting his infestation pit. If he holds this, he will have the investor tech he needs, and he will basically just defend and then take the game. It's one of the most common strategies that we have in this matchup at this point. And of course, oh, he's actually even pulling back the probes from his, uh, the drones from his third base. But he needs a lot more units and he needs, well, the infestors would be nice, but the they spines, are just way too far away. The spines are so important here. There's eight of them. And he doesn't, you know, he, this isn't something you necessarily have to make, but in this case, Hugo does not have enough units, he wants them. And this means, yeah, if he's going to lose that third base, he's mining only gas at that location. But this is not going to be a game-ending move by Hero. He's going to lose the base, and he won't be able to get the tag. And that queen is saved by the force field. That doesn't happen too often. Yeah. But Yu-Gi-Oh! already knew that he has no chance of defending the third. So he sacks the third. He sacks the few drones that he has. Actually, Hero doesn't even kill them. And with the spine crawlers ready, he's in a position where he can definitely defend against the big push. Yeah, I don't think he's even going to really be able to commit up to this. Back at home, five centuries made a second cannon. He well, that certainly indicates he wants to commit. He can expand again at the top left, but no, now finally Hero taking down these units, and this actually makes Yu-Gi-Oh wait a little bit before he drops down another hatch. He's still trying to save harvesters here, and Hero goes for the robotics bay. You know, he's really uncomfortable with walking up this ramp. He doesn't want to engage there, and he shouldn't. So at this point, he's just happy that he was able to kill the third base, and is now sitting tight on two bases on his own. Yu-Gi-Oh, why would you build the hatch now? Why would you do that? You know with the creep and everything that his opponent is on the low ground. Why would you do this? That I mean, was really weird. Yeah. Ah. It was a big risk by him. He gets the cancel off, but and either way that shows the drones and everything else. He waited earlier. He had the drone in position and then when he saw that uh, Hero was walking into the high ground again and took down the assimilators, he's just waiting a little bit and he's like, well, maybe I shouldn't build the hatch. But then at this point, he just walks in. That was really odd. Super supply blocks, by the way, as well. He's been at 100 out of 100, basically, or 99 out of 100 for a really long time. He's just now starting the three overlords that he needs. Getting the macro hatch up as well, but he's not spending his money because he can't. And uh oh, this this warp prism is asking to get fungled. Yeah, it's begging. It's saying, please fungal me. He's got a sign on his back. Someone put it there, a bully, probably. And no, not fast enough. The infestors, of course. He spots the base, he spots the third, and now the no, infestor is fungal. Nah, no. Oh man, he, he just... Yu-Gi-Oh has mercy. He's like, well, it's okay. I know that the bullies put the sign up there. I'm going to be nice to you. He's like, uh, you have a sign on your back. Excuse, excuse me. Warp Pistol, Warp Prison. Warp Prison's like... Arr, arr. He like, <laughs> takes the sign off. <laughs> <laughs> nah, well... He could have fungal it and dropped a few Infested Terrans, but he didn't. <laughs> Saves the energy at this point. And Warp Prism like warps in like 15 Zealots in the shape of thank you, and then like goes back into transport mode the last second, cancels all of them, Cross gets all his resources back, and the Investor's just like, no problem, man. It's totally cool. I will kill you next time I see you, though. If I get the chance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, too far. <laughs> all right, I admit it. I'm coming clean here, that was too far. <laughs> just, just a little bit. <laughs> the Spire now nearly done for Yu-Gi-Oh! And on two bases, with the third now coming up, um, that's a pretty nice addition to what he already has on the map. Because with the Investors, he can just make sure that his opponent isn't getting aggressive. But what can he actually do with the Spire? He can work against the Colossi, he needs Corruptors. But that's basically all that he can do. And he needs more gas to pull it off. Yeah, 
Uh, one of the spine crawlers needs to be moved. There it is. He's moving it. He's got a nice little setup here uh, in between his third and his natural, but he's lost so much mining. I mean, Hero's been mining at a third base longer than the, the Zerg has, yep. and that's just... Well, that just tells the story. I yeah, don't that's need to explain how <laughs> that what that means. That's pretty unfortunate for the Zerg, indeed. Yeah. He's ahead in overall supply. He has a pretty cool position now with being on three bases, and the army that he controls makes sure that Yu-Gi-Oh can't really move out. Yu-Gi-Oh Yu -Oh is relying onto the spine crawlers now quite a bit. So that's the one thing that Hero is not really comfortable attacking into the spine crawlers. And we once again ha look at these sentry counts. This is actually like insane. Yes, thirteen. Biggest with sentries, man. Yeah, thirteen sentries in total. And his army, he may have other sentries lurking around. Hero has to start to prepare for the late game. So we need a Stargate, we need a Fleet Beacon, he needs to start with a Mothership. And I would actually love to see a second forge as well. He certainly has the resources to pull it off now, being on three bases. Yeah, and right now there's no Carapace upgrades for the Zerg army. And some best turns being dropped prematurely here for Yugo to try to buy him some time. I think Hero has no intention of going to that late game. He's got plus three on the way, but I mean, you're right. He needs a Stargate and he doesn't have it. The investors are, are trying to attack here, but Hero actually leading the charge with his Colossi, which with good micro is actually really smart here. Hero wants to crush this, and there are not as many spine crawlers at one position. He can actually just take them yep. one at a time. A oh, very patient defense here by Yu-Gi-Oh, but his spine crawlers are starting to thin out here a little bit. And now Yu-Gi-Oh is committing to the defense. He has the Corruptors. They take down his opponent's Colossi, and this is why you usually don't attack into a spine crawler wall, ladies and gentlemen. Yep, this is a big problem right now for Hero. He loses his last Colossus. The Corruptors are dead weight, but the Investors are not. He doesn't get the Fungal off, though, and now he's going to face a Blink. That Blink definitely gives him a lot to think about, but we have a lot of Zerglings on the way. The Great Aspire is now halfway done. And so far, Yu-Gi-Oh! De uh, defended well. The Hero dropped in supply by a, well, quite a lot. He's down to 127 right now against 136. So a little bit overzealous here with his attack. Yeah, look at his look at his resources as well. He's got the minerals, but not the gas. So he's trying to spend this desperately, even getting a few zealots out right now. He wants to get up and attack this hatchery. But they're mostly Zerglings now for Yu-Gi-Oh! If you disregard the investors. Yeah. So this is actually a pretty cool composition for Hero. And if he kills the third here on the fourth, then Yu-Gi-Oh! is out of luck. The Broodlords are building right now, but the damage that Hero does at this point is so important it will carry on into the late game. Yeah, the Broodlords right now are actually at the natural and you, if he can just get past his investors guardian shield is up he's not he's not fungling you know he's he's botched a few times this time he fungles but only hits four stalkers and hero's about to have plus three he wants these to save the energy. Go too far back he wants to save the energy so that he can fungal when the brood lords are part of the composition the third is still alive by the way and now with the brood lords hero is in a, a huge he has a huge problem here. But yeah, the third it, might just die. Exactly. He's forced to engage now. This is what he does not want to do until the last second. And he gets the hatchery, blinks up, uses the force seal. Beautifully done. And now Hero is moving in at the natural. The Infestors and the Broodlords are exposed. He blinks under those Broods. And now here are the Funnels, the Broodlords. There are not enough of them, but they still can't do damage. And indeed, they deal. Uh, they kill a few of those Stalkers. And on the high ground, we have nice Blink Micro. Great Blink Micro, actually, by Hero. But those stalkers, they are out of luck. It's just way too many zerglings. He look could at blink those. down. There he does. I already lost a yeah, fair amount. Several of, them. of them going down. Having a good concave at the, at the top of the ramp, though, with that force field helped him out significantly. The investors, just all of them, very low energy. A few fungals available to him. If he blinks now, things could be hairy. Ah, uh, the fourth, of course, at the top left is now saturated as all the drones were transitioned over there. But now, this is really scary. In the War Prism, I love it. Hero actually trying to get the War Prism in the main base to warp in additional units and open up a second flank. This is really smart. Yu-Gi-Oh! is so pressured. He can actually just warp in sentries and block the ramp. Now we may do just that. A few investors pop out just in time with that passive Glands upgrade. And since no sentries got out, he does have to blink here. A missed blink saves four of the five stalkers, though. Even gets the queen. And Yu-Gi-Oh! is still going strong with a few Broodlords, though. But he needs more, and he needs to mine gas on top yeah, level, which he doesn't do. And the Colossi are now doing the real damage. I don't think he can hold on much longer with the plus three, plus two armor about to finish the hero here as well. Too many Stalkers. Yeah. There are just way too many Stalkers. Exactly, and now he can actually blink forward if he wants to and catch these Broods, and he does! One! Gets one. I could have gotten two, but he pulls back. He plays this really safe, and if he kills the base to the top left, 
then there's nothing that Yu-Gi-Oh can do. He's already hard pressed for gas, and at this point, Hero is just looking way stronger than his opponent. It's yeah. a crazy game, back and forth, but Yu-Gi-Oh is running out of Brood Lords, and this is exactly what he needs. He needs more of them. Yeah, the Stalker's taking out not only the drones, but the hatchery as well. And a ton of spines being made for Yu-Gi-Oh, but Yu-Gi-Oh, you gotta say, man, on two bases, you're gonna need that 700 mils you just made on those spine cores because you don't have a third. You're only delaying the inevitable. It's not like those spines are gonna win you the game. Even if Hero right-clicks by mistake for a few seconds, I don't think those spines are gonna save you. He's, I mean, but what else can he do? He doesn't have many options. He's still on two bases and he's at 120 supply and he's running out of minerals and gas fast. This main base is nearly mined out and at the same time Hero is just taking the fourth. So the CJ Enters player is about to finish this. I mean, what can Hero do? He can try to attack, but is he able to take another base? I don't think so. Yeah, Hero's got the base to the top right, three-fourths of the way done. Yu-Gi-Oh! is trying to take another base here, but no. Cancels. And the Investor energy count is getting a little bit higher. His Investor count has gotten up to 20 as well. Uh, and he's got the Broodlords out, so you know, he's got a position here where, yeah, he can win a fight, but his bank is going to be so much smaller very soon here. And oh no, the drone's long distance mining getting caught. Oh, that's so many workers lost. It puts him down to 31. A nice fungal here by Hero. And he also starts with the Stargate, so he wants to get the Mothership after all. At this point in time, he actually doesn't even need it because he made sure that Yu-Gi-Oh cannot get this huge army with Broodlords. And he didn't get the cancel on the hatchery. The creep is pushed back quite significantly as well, so he can't even go up to the line of sight blockers. Six brood loads are just simply not enough. Yeah, he's going to need a lot more than that. The infester count alone is not good when there are this many colossi. There are five colossi in this army, plus three. He's about to have plus three armor on these units. The fleet beacon will start as soon as that Stargate is done. He's getting Templar Archives. Here is sitting there and he's like, yeah, what you going to do? Exactly. What you gonna do? You can't do anything. Move out, be my guest. He's not gonna fight into the, that many Infestors and spine crawlers. He's just not gonna allow Yu-Gi-Oh to take that, that fight. And even if Yu-Gi-Oh did take that fight, Hero would still probably be able to recover. There's a simple reason why Yu-Gi-Oh builds this many Infestors, because he wants energy units. He's just trying to get as many units that use energy because he knows that he doesn't have any additional income. And look at the production tab here. Templar Archive, additional uh, additional cannons just to be on the safe side, getting the War Prism speed, and also, of course, the Fleet Beacon. Mothership is gonna end up in this game uh, sooner rather than later. And yeah. the Harvest account itself already tells the tale with 30 against 70. Hero attacked a few of his own Colossi to get the supply needed to make Mothership. And he's gonna blink onto these, oh, the Broodlords. The, the positioning of the Investors is pretty weak here. He's not able to really do anything at all with them. Three. Dropping the Investors on the high ground, but the Colossi just take them out. Yeah, three of the Broodlords are already gone. He has only three left, and those Investors, they don't do anything anymore. He walks the Colossus through the Investors. Yeah, he actually loses the Investors if he isn't careful here. Yeah, it falls there. It there. Is. Gotta be careful about that. The Mothership is started. Indeed, but now the supply doubled. Exactly, you can trade like this with the economy has 2,500 minerals, 2,000 resources, 10 High Templar made at once. All the gas just disappeared magically. Is because I can. Yeah. Making the Archons. Shield upgrades. He's on 3-3 already with armor and attack. Another war prison. He is just, at this point, this is just basically him being super, super safe. Yeah, he's not going to take any risks. Yu-Gi-Oh is, is hoping for luck here. Dropping more Infest Terrans on the high ground. Something that Yu-Gi-Oh has done consistently in this game is prematurely drop his Infest Terrans. I'm not saying prematurely in necessarily a bad way, but uh, it has not really been very useful for him so far. Hero is stacking probes now. He yep. wants to have more army supply before he moves in. And here comes the Templar. He wants to feed back those Infestors. The problem though is the Spines and those high ground uh, He's even getting the Dark Shrine in charge now. He's giving, getting every single tech and upgrade in the book. This is a fun game to play for Hero here. He just knows he's got his opponent in a basically unwinnable position. By the way, in the main base, there's a Warp Prism warping in a ton of Zealots not waiting for that Dark Shrine. They get bungled immediately, but the Warp Prism does survive, and now he's going to have to use a ton of energy on these Zealots. He's just fungling over and over again. I actually like how he defended here. This yeah. is pretty cool. Not losing any units, just only losing energy. All of them are gone, but it's not like Hero can't afford it. Exactly, and this is 
This is what Yu-Gi-Oh is hoping for. He's trying to get those energy units in the late game, as you said, so that he can trade because he knows his economy is poor. He can make units from nothing, essentially, with that energy. But eventually, Hero may run uh, over him here. Hero does not have the 6th base up just yet. Okay, actually, I take it back. He... Or rather, I meant to say 5th base, but he does have that 5th base at the uh, pocket expansion. Here is 60 army supply ahead of his opponent. 60 army supply, that's how far ahead he is at this point. And his upgrades are, of course, also insane with 3 brood lords. They are only infestors. The infestor count is 26 now. He is playing a little bit freaky style. He knows that he is low on economy. But here comes the mothership, and there is no... There's just no other parasite. No. No Neural, and he's not going to be able to approach, not with the small army he has. And the Broodlords are not even a concern. There's only three of them. He the Archons are he just... He has only one Overseer. If yeah. that's going to get sniped, there's nothing that he can do against exactly. the Exactly, and he doesn't really have that many resources well, to afford making more. He has, of course, the, the Fundals that he can use, but still... With all the Infestors that he drops, I'm not quite sure if he will have enough Fundals to uh, see the entire army, and uh, he can't conquer them to death. Yeah, now he's being point. pushed back. Yeah, and he's dropping a bunch of Infested Terrans yet again. They're not going to be able to do enough damage even with plus two attack, the plus three. Plus the shields for Hero is just too much. All the Infested Terrans die, and I think this is the end here for Yu-Gi-Oh. He cannot, I mean, the Hatchery could not die any faster. Four he, built, he built new Overseers as he realized that he didn't see anything. A GG. Yu-Gi-Oh loses.